biotechnology can be very beneficial to humanity if used in accordance with stipulated regulations and ethics. It has potential risks it poses which have to be carefully assessed. Biotechnology can endanger the environment, humans, birds, insects, worms and other organisms. What could happen in the absence of those regulations, a science could cause that abuse that you are talking about. That's why the, those regulations need to be in place and uh, uh, approved and supported by the government. In 2001, Uganda ratified the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety, which is an international agreement on the application and safety of biotechnology. Most countries, including those in Africa that are signatories to the protocol agreement, have enacted biotechnology and biosafety laws. There are countries that are at the stage of, uh, of bills in parliament. And the cases are Uganda, we are at the bill stage because the bill is in parliament. Burundi, Rwanda, Ivory Coast, Guinea-Bissau, Tunisia to mention but a few. The Katagena protocol demands that all products of biotechnology, like genetically modified organisms, be premised on the principle that upholds public health against economic benefit. Uh, you are introducing genes, inserting them, and rapidly within three years or so, you get a variety, which under normal conventional breeding would have taken 10, 12 years. But now within two, three years, you're able to produce a variety. The issue is, <clears throat> would these genes flow and contaminate the environment, and therefore huh, cause changes within the biodiversity and the ecosystem, that's also another challenge. In Uganda, scientists are working under the guidance of the Uganda National Council for Science and Technology. The council has a biosafety committee working under it, and it was the committee's duty to put in place a biotechnology and biosafety policy in 2008. The stringent policy confines all genetic research and trials in the various research centers. It is a statutory instrument of government giving the National Biosafety Committee of the National Council for Science and Technology the authority and the instruments to do its work properly, to be regulated so that we cannot be sued or, you know, so that the processes are done properly. Whoever does anything wrong, you must be put to book. The Bill on Biotechnology and Biosafety, which is under the docket of the Minister of Finance and Planning, could be of benefit in many ways if passed into law. Scientists, for example, will be able to release their new products to the public. Currently, all products successfully tested are still confined in either laboratories or trial fields. We are only able to, to do research and product development in biotechnology. But we need to go further than that. So if products, for instance, out of our research, become commercially viable, we need a framework to move those products to the market. Also, scientists will be able to innovate and own patents. We can construct our own gene here and put it in our own crop, our own seed, and produce it and use it. Right now, we do not have the capacity to do that entirely. The Uganda National Council for Science and Technology will remain the competent authority to oversee biotechnology and biosafety. But the Biosafety Committee will be given more authority and have more representatives from the private sector and Minister of Justice for purposes of regulation. While the Council for Science and Technology will approve the development, testing and use of genetically modified organisms, the Biosafety Committee will review and make recommendations on applications received by the Council from those preparing to undertake research. The Biosafety Committee will also advise the Council for Science on implementation of the biotechnology and biosafety law. And we know Uganda National Council of Science and Technology is the one promoting. So how do you promote and regulate against yourself? You see? So we are saying it is a bill that is done in a, in a bad face. Because when you designate the National Council for Science and Technology, most likely issues of conflict of interest will arise. Because the National Council at the moment is the promoter of the technology. But now we are looking for a regulator of the technology. So the promoter cannot be designated to regulate the technology. 
So that one we have also handled it in the committee report. The Biotechnology and Biosafety Bill is technical and it is not clear whether members of parliament were able to consult as of when the speaker deferred the bill in late 2013. I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know and I don't want to answer. <laughs> I don't want to answer for my colleagues. Labeling GMOs to enable consumers to make a choice has become requisite in many countries where GMOs are produced. This issue and another of the patenting of such innovations are some of those the public has pointed out as weakly addressed in the bill. You know, the whole bill cannot be bad. The whole bill cannot be bad. But components, some components, particularly those in respect to transfer and application, that's where I have a problem. Because so far in Uganda, they will tell you that we, have, we can only register three patents in a whole year. Offenses and penalties is another area of concern. Some believe the penalties are not deterrent enough in case somebody released unauthorized GMO, damages the environment, or fails to put in place required emergency safety measures in case of an intentional release of a GMO. The ultimate goal of the bill is to ensure that biotechnology research and the eventual release of biotech products do not adversely impact on human health and the environment. Frank Walisembi, NTV.